Let's jump into some quantum numbers practice. There's so many different ways to ask these types of questions. Here they're asking us what kind of L values and shapes will we see under each N value. So there is a formula to calculate the allowed L values. So your max L is going to be equal to N minus 1. Students don't really like this formula that much or use it all that much. I liked it when I was a student, but I listen to y'all. Um, the reason why it's a lot more intuitive to just look at the periodic table and think about your electron configuration. So in the first row of the periodic table, which is n equals 1. We just have hydrogen and helium. And if you were to write an electron configuration for either one of those, you would tell me it's 1s1 or 1s2. So the only kind of shapes that we see in that first row are s orbitals. You do have to put a correlation chart. That's going to help a lot. People do like this part. So your L values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and it's going to correspond to S, P, D, and F shaped orbitals. So if the only shape that I see in the first row is S, then my L value is just going to be 0. Similarly, in the second row of the periodic table, we use the S block and the P block for our electron configuration. So the shapes that I see are S and P. So that means that I have L values of 0 and 1 that are allowed underneath the principal quantum number of n equals 2. Let me show you this way as well, just in case it's the electron configurations aren't your jam or something like that. So max L, like if I was going to use it this way, equals n, which is 2, 2 minus 1 equals 1. Key thing here, this is your max L. So everything below that is also going to happen and it's also allowed. Um, we talk about allowable sets of numbers a lot with quantum numbers. So 0 and 1, that's why I have a 0, but that's the maximum value if you're using that formula. All right, so the second question kind of gets deeper into the quantum numbers. Now we're talking about the orientations. So if we have L equals zero, the first thing I want to think about is what kind of shape does that correspond to? So that's going to correspond to um, an S-shaped orbital. So this is what I'm thinking when I see L equals zero. Because I'm dealing with S orbitals. Again, we have formulas to do this, so you can think about your electron configuration. You have the option of just memorizing it. People do it a lot of different ways. Um, the formula is going to be 2L plus 1. And that's going to tell us um, the number of orientations. What that translates to in your electron configuration is the number of lines that you have available. So if you remember your s orbitals, remember like from electron configurations, you only draw one line because the s orbital can only hold two electrons. You could also use the formula to figure that out and do 2 times 0 plus 1, and that's going to give you 1. So you have one orientation. Critical, critical piece that I discussed in the previous video. That's the number of orientations. It's not the actual ML values. 
the ml values are always centered around um, zero. So for f, we have just one orientation, and I'm going to give it a value of zero. So the only allowable value under L equals zero is going to be ML equals zero, indicating that the S orbital only can do one thing and hold two electrons. All right, let's look at L equals one, which is a more um, interesting example, right? Let's do it different ways. I'm going to use my formula. So two times one plus one gives me three. Or you might remember electron configurations. I remember the p orbitals always held six electrons. You had three lines when you did your, your p orbitals, right? The ml values, and so that's my three, one, two, three, the ml values are centered around zero. So for p, I'm going to do negative one, zero, and positive one. And so there's three different ways that the p orbital can orient itself. So ML, my set of ML values for L equals 1 is negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Because the way I'm interpreting it is these orbitals exist. They're known to exist. So 0, 1, 2, 3, which is S, P, D, and F. You've used them to write electron configuration. Beyond that, there's theories or people have hypothesized that these orbitals might exist if the elements had enough electrons. Right now we don't have um, any elements that large, but um, as you're probably aware, they're discovering or creating, synthesizing new elements all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get here at some point, to at least to a G. But however, there's some things that just don't ever, ever happen. So um, again, thinking back to your electron configuration, there's no such thing as a 1p orbital. p orbitals are not allowed under the first quantum number, principal quantum number 1. You just don't see p orbitals in the first row of the periodic table. So that would be a situation of something that's not allowed. So just to clarify here, um, we're trying to identify things that just don't make any sense. They're not allowed and they'll never exist. So what s? Well, that's real. That's the orbital that um, hydrogen and helium have their valence electrons in. And we just know that from experience. Similarly, 2p. Well, that sounds reasonable enough because when we get to the second row of the periodic table, that's when the p block shows up. Um, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, they all use a 2p to hold their valence electrons. So this is real. So for 4s, you might know just from experience that it's real. When you get to the fourth row of the periodic table, um, that would be one of the orbitals you use when you're writing an electron configuration. However, if you didn't know, you can analyze it because the 4 stands for the end of atom. So we know n equals 4. And s, we go over there and we're like, okay, s means that L equals 0. So is this an allowed combination of quantum numbers? How do we know? So our formulas tell us that the max L value is n minus 1. So here, 4 minus 1, our max L value is 3. What does that mean? So we come over here, all of these orbitals, 0, 1, 2, 3, or S, P, D, F, are possible when n equals 4. They're all allowed under n equals 4. So a point of confusion in the past students have been like, no, if n equals 4, then L has to equal 3. That's not the case. It's anything up to and including 3. So the lower numbers are possible as well. 2D. Again, this one's real. And over here, again, you might know from experience that 2D is not a thing. 
right? We don't start using d orbitals in our electron configurations until we get to the third row, the periodic group. So that's one way of just saying um, that it's not real or not allowed. However, we can also analyze it using formulas. So n equals 2. So our max L value is 2 minus 1 or 1. So the L values that are possible are going to be 0 and 1, or S and P. D has an L value of 2. So it's a non-allowed combination of quantum numbers. Alrighty, so when I'm doing this kind of analysis, I always start with my principal quantum number, and I want to take advantage of the formula that tells me um, what kind of shapes of orbitals are allowed under a particular principal quantum number. So max L equals n minus 1. So my max L value is 3 minus 1, which equals 2. So that means under a principal quantum number of 3, I can have 0, 1, or 2, which corresponds to S, P, and D. So any of these three numbers would be acceptable to here. However, they took it too far and they put L equals 3. So that, that's a problem. When I'm attempting to fix this, I want to look also at my ML value. I don't want to reinvent the whole set of numbers. So L equals 2 tells me that I'm in the D subshell because this is the one that has the five orbitals and then can go from negative 2 all the way up to positive 2. I can't put like a P, right? Because P only does negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So if that kind of restricts me with what I can replace here, I'm going to have to do an L equals 2 for my correction. All right, next one. So N equals 2 and L equals 1. That sounds like a good combination, right? Because um, our max L is 1. We can also think about it in terms of what are they talking about? Have we ever uh, written that down when we're using um, an writing an electron configuration? So we have 2, and then our L value would be P. And I'm like, yes, I know that there's two P's. I've used those. Let's check here. So this is a little bit problematic, right? Because our P's only have three orientations, and those are defined by ML values of negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So that's going to be our mistake, or our issue, our non-allowed number. And you can replace it with any of these three numbers. So just pick one of them. You know, any of them would be right, but just pick one to put back in there. Alrighty, let's see what's going on over here. So right off the bat, I see this, this issue, right? The N value and the L value cannot be the same because the max L always has to be one less. What would this mean, right? What combination would this mean? This would be one, and if L equals one, that would be a one P. Eh, never heard of that. P's don't come out to the second row. So we can change this to a zero, right? And if n equals one and l equals zero, then we're talking about a one s, which exists. And then ml equals zero, well that's fine because we know that only two electrons are in that s orbital. We have one line, but we're gonna put a zero there for our ml value. So here we're dealing with um, these sets of quantum numbers again. So we have n equals 3, we're in the third row of the periodic table. And again, we can use that max L equals n minus 1 formula. So we can go all the way up to 2. We can have 0, 1, or 2. We can have S, P, or D. However, since ML equals 2, I'm going to want to use L equals 2, so I don't cause more issues. 
here we're missing the principal quantum number. And we have L equals 2, which is a d orbital, right? A d subshell. ML equals negative 1. And you can see from our table over there that's perfectly acceptable under um, a d subshell or L equals 2. And then the spin, we haven't really seen too much of. There's only two options for spin, plus 1 half or minus 1 half. And that gets down to the level of the individual electron. So I want to do at least the three here, right? Because we don't see d orbitals until we get to the third row, or until we get to the fourth row, but we call them 3d when we're writing our electron configuration. Or we could say, okay, max L, we have to use at least the three, because three minus one is two, and they already put the two in for us. However, um, n, can actually be greater than or equal to three. So you could have done a four, a five, a six. We don't have anything beyond six yet. Again, that's where we get into this theoretical stuff because there's only six rows in the periodic table, but anything above, equal to or above three. Here, this one's missing everything, but we do have a very specific clue, L equals zero. So we're talking about an S orbital. S orbitals exist for every single n value. So n, again, we can do one of those greater than or equal to, n can be greater than or equal to 1, because there's 1s, 2s, 3s. And now we're a little bit restricted there. There's only one orientation, and it has a value of 0. The spin, you could do plus 1 half, or you could do minus 1 half. It's up to you there. All right, so this is a really cool problem. Remember I said that um, quantum numbers are like social security numbers. So every single electron within an element is going to have something unique in its set of quantum numbers. There's not going to be any repeats. I selected boron for this problem because it only has five electrons. This process is possible for any element on the periodic table, it just gets really tedious when you have like 50 electrons or something like that. So when you are attacking a problem like this, you want to think about the electron configuration. So if we're doing the electron configuration for boron, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. And so there'll be a video where I go over the electron configuration. But again, the expectation is that um, you remember a little bit of this from Chem 100. We're actually going to go into um, more complicated examples pretty quickly. So you might want to review this if this was a distant memory or something like that. You, you should be able to write basic electron configurations. Um, so. The principal quantum number is this first value out here. So we have an n shell. Um, and then we know s is associated with l equals 0. So there's two electrons in the 1s orbital. So I'm going to do make a little table here. I'll do n. Give myself more space here. I'll do N, L, M, L, and M, S. And I'm going to need five entries on this table, one for each of these five electrons. So two of the electrons are in this 1s orbital. So I'm going to do 1 and a 0 and 1 and a zero. For ML, for under L equals one, we know that we can only have an ML value of zero. Only one orientation is allowed. So both of these first two electrons are going to have ML values of zero and zero. What makes it unique now is one of them is going to be spin up and one of them is going to be spin down or clockwise and counterclockwise. So we'll do plus one half and minus one half. 
you're looking at this, right, it would be like this. So now we've got quantum numbers for these first two electrons. Now we're at n equals 2. That first number is our principal quantum number. So we have a 2 and a 2. Two electrons in that s orbital. So the zeros are all going to be the same because we're, we're dealing with an s orbital again. And we're going to capture those spins by doing a plus 1 half and a minus 1 half. The fifth and last electron is in a 2p orbital. So I'm going to do 2. And then L for 2 is going to be 1. The ML value? Well, there's no direct correlation. I know I keep on writing negative 1, 0, positive 1. But that's not really how it works. We don't know what the ML value is here. So your guess is as good as mine. You're allowed to put negative 1, 0, or positive 1 um, in this spot here. So I'll just arbitrarily choose negative 1. So you could pick 0, you could pick plus 1. Same thing with the spin. I, knew, I know I drew it going up, but that's arbitrary. I could have just as easily drawn it going down. So I could do um, a plus 1 half or a minus 1 half in that position. Alrighty, one more practice here that I've added on, just in case you need a little bit more um, one more practice here that I've added on, just in case you need to see another example. So the beginning of the quantum numbers for neon will look very similar to the quantum numbers for boron. And that's because the beginning of the electron configurations are the same. So when I talk about it being unique, I mean it's unique. The quantum numbers are unique within that individual element. But from one element to the next, there's an awful lot of overlap. Um, so we have N, L, M, L, and M, X. I need to remember to write a little bit smaller here because now I need to list out 10 sets of quantum numbers, 40 numbers altogether, right? Because there's four for each. So the 1s was 1, and then we put zeros. And then the two electrons have opposite spin, so you do a plus 1 half and a minus 1 half. 2s is very, very similar to the next two electrons except your principal quantum number is now 2 instead of 1. I wanted to talk about 2p6. So what happens when you have a larger orbital that has multiple electrons on here? So our principal quantum number, our n value, is 2 for all 6 of these electrons. And because we're dealing with a p orbital, we know our l value, our angular momentum quantum number, is going to be 1. So this combination, 2 and 1, is going to come out 6 times. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 6 electrons in there. And then I'm going to do uh, 1, one, one, six ones. Okay, so those are all, that's the shell and the subshell. Now we're looking at the orientation. So there's three orientations or three distinct orbitals underneath the P subshell. They are negative one, zero, and positive one. Each one of them holds two electrons. So I'm going to do negative 1 twice. 
zero twice and plus one twice. And then at that point, the two that are exactly the same, it's critical that we make them different by the spin quantum number. So we need a plus one half and a minus one half, plus one half, minus one half, and then plus one half, and minus one half. Um, if it wasn't completely full, so like say, uh, this wasn't here, right? Then you have a choice. You can eliminate any one of these six lines. You don't necessarily have to eliminate the last line because we don't exactly know where that electron is over Heisenberg. So um, you have some flexibility when you don't have a full shell or a full subshell.